Hey, what's up everybody? So I hope uh, the audio is good. I have the microphone down here for a reason. Uh, today's date is, what is it? 12-6. 12-6-2017. Welcome back to another series of videos. I think this is number 12. Um, I'm kind of slowly gearing up to other things I want to express, but today we're going to do some practical thinking through experimentation. So first things first, I'm going to tell you the setup, and then we're going to get started. So I have this high voltage probe from Blaine. Thank you, sir. We'll get that out. I believe it works. If not, I have another one he sent me. So this is going to be measuring high voltage. Okay, put that over there. Um, I have a high voltage transformer. This is 10,000 volts DC. Okay, the end of it is right here. This is the positive side. And the negative side is grounded to one of these plates. So what I have here is I have, I gotta be careful with that one. I just broke it off, so we may have a problem, but we're gonna try it. I have here just an aluminum plate. Okay, what is that, quarter inch thick maybe? And then I have a sheet of mylar, okay? This is actually from uh, Sandia National Labs. So it has some holes in it, so I taped, taped them shut. So I have two pieces of mylar, and then I have another aluminum plate. Now, for the moment, I'm gonna take this piece of mylar And I'm going to put it somewhere where it is out of our way. I don't want it to pick up a bunch of dirt. Let's just set it here. It's going to pick up dirt no matter what I do, I guess. I'll just set it over here out of the way. And so high voltage probe, we got the transformer. Uh, then I'm going to take a measurement on our capacity because what we're doing is building a capacitor. Okay, so we've got a plate a piece of mylar with a giant hole burned into it. Now the reason I want the mic really close, I may actually put it right here, is because I want you to be able to hear the noises, okay? Because it's really cool. I hope the audio in the background isn't enough to worry about. So I'm gonna have to offset this stuff so that I put the corner out because I got holes in this mylar and I didn't fix it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put everything off to its side, okay? That's what I thought was going to happen. I'm just going to be very careful and not hurt myself. I've got these high voltage insulators, but, uh, well, unfortunately, I broke this one this morning. So, I don't recommend you do this. I'm going to be very careful. So, we'll just, we'll, we, we can do this, this piece of nylon. As long as I don't get my hand too close, it'll be all right. So, the question and exper uh, experiment that we're doing today, okay, is depending on where you're taught you get taught different things so I'm gonna draw a capacitor and I'm gonna explain the way sometimes it gets explained you have a capacitor they say charges build up on the plates okay this is the way it's brought out so you've got Really, it's just on the inside. So you've got technically less charges here and more charges there. No, I'm sorry. Less charges here and more charges there. That's what they usually say. But then you have a dielectric. Okay, and this dielectric happens to be this sheet of mylar. Now, what I'm bringing to your attention today, which has been demonstrated by other people, this is not my original demonstration, uh, matter of fact, I think you can find an MIT course where they use the linen jar and they do the same thing. They take the linen jar apart and put it back together. But we're going to use plates here because this is, uh, we're going to do some other interesting things. So, it is taught in certain c circumstances that the charge is actually stored in the dielectric, not on the plates. So that means if I charge up this capacitor, 
and I take the dielectric out the film if I take the film out and I put the two plates together or touch the plate when it's off the dielectric nothing should happen I should be able to do just about anything to that dielectric sheet the mylar roll it up you know rub it against stuff as long as I don't heat it up or maybe hit it with a hammer I don't know uh, then we should be fine whenever we put it back together we should see a charge now you're gonna have a really hard time reading this meter okay I realize this so what I'm going to do is read it out to you okay so I've got I've got the power supply these grab the metal case is the ground on this guy okay and the uh, the ground is connected to this plate and then I'll be probing with this I haven't tested this meter I've been using the other one so it should work I gotta be careful with it though because it actually broke at one time so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna measure the capacity of this so let's just use a regular digital multimeter again my camera's pretty far away I needed the wide shot so you're not gonna be able to see it very well so I've got this you know mylar offset and the plates offset due to the fact that the voltage jumps around the mylar I didn't cut it big enough so let's just see what we got so it's it's bouncing around probably because of how I'm trying to measure this so it's it's somewhere around nine farads from my from my other meter this meter may not be working 100 percent somewhere around nine farads I'm sorry, nine microfarads, UF. So keep that in mind, okay? This is a dangerous experiment if you don't know what you're doing. I should probably take all my rings and watch off. I'm not going to. Um, because this power supply, I, I don't know what the rating is on it. Uh, it's 10,000 volts, but I don't know what the amperage rating is. Uh, however, when this thing's charged up, it's deadly. So let's plug it in power supply will be on then okay I hear it buzzing let's go ahead and take a voltage reading make sure this meter is working so you may not be able to see that but it's right at 10 kilovolt okay so that's what the supply is rated for um, so let's measure the capacitor plate it is at zero so what we are going to do okay is we are going to charge the plate with this now sometimes things arc over and all kinds of stuff so we just have to see what we get but what we're trying to do here okay is demonstrate where the charge is held is it on the plates is it in the dielectric what's really going on so here we go Now, if the audio picks up all the all this really good stuff, then you'll hear some really cool, interesting things. But it may not be able to pick it up. So, one thing to note: so it's charged up. I should be very careful now. One thing that you should know is that this meter, okay, how it works is a really high resistance dropped across a small resistance, and you're measuring the point between the two. So it's a voltage divider. So what I mean by that, which is the problem, is this is going to discharge the capacitor. However, it'll be slow enough that we can get a reading. And I want you to listen. The tip of this thing is going to get closer and closer and closer. And because it's across the plate here, you'll actually start hear hissing sounds from the tip of this guy. So listen. I don't know if you can hear that, but I'm gonna t I've discharged a tiny bit of it by doing that. So I'm going to stick it on there and see what we got. And you hear that noise? So that's actually the plastic. Listen. Okay. So we're sitting right at. I think it charged up to about 7,500, and now it's at 5,000. Uh, 5, I mean, 7,500. And it's slowly discharging. It doesn't quite reach 10K. So let's charge it back up again. Now we are going to check it okay it was right at actually about 9 kV okay this is the care this is where I gotta be real careful so what I'm actually gonna be doing is I'm gonna be pulling off this plate now I lost my insulator so I gotta be careful as long as I'm not grounded I should be alright 
So watch this. Okay? Watch this. Okay? You can hear it's kind of staticky. So what I'm going to actually do is show you that it is it is staticky. It has a static type feel to it. Okay? Now I'm going to roll this up. I gotta be careful touching the ends because I actually did get myself pretty good charged one time. So, technically, I just rolled this up, which means I'm putting one sheet against the other sheet. So, technically, it should discharge itself. So, we can put these plates back on here. This way, I guess. We can check our voltage. It is nothing. Okay, I can touch this. Nothing happens. So, all that charge is in here. No, I rolled it up. Okay, went around, touched it on myself, whatever. both sides. It doesn't matter. So, we're going to put it back on here. And if I got it reversed, then it's going to show me a negative voltage. If I got it the right way, it's going to show me the right voltage. So, here we go. I believe it was like this. Now we're going to check the voltage. It is negative. I have that plate backwards. We are going to flip it over. I mean the sheet backwards. I gotta watch out for this uh, this hole in here. It's gotta be far enough away from the plate so it doesn't jump the gap there. Okay. Here we go. So it's sitting at about uh, eight kilovolt, something like that. It loses a tiny little bit due to the fact that this overlap. If I flip this the wrong way, the dielectric on this edge is not actually charged. So now we're gonna discharge it. Okay, so we're just going to clamp a ground on here, and we're basically going to discharge it. So here we go. Hear that spark? See that spark? Now I can touch it, no problem. So what that shows you, right, is that even when I flipped the sheet, it showed negative. So that means it's stored here. Okay, so now let me ask you another question. What if I took another Okay, these long ones are the dielectric. I'm putting arrows on there to show you which way I flip them. So if I put two sheets in here and they're like this, that means their charge, right, should be through all of them. So therefore I can actually only charge uh, half the voltage across each one. Technically. Um, so in this video, by the way, I'm not going through sizes and area and dimensions and all this stuff. We're not working through all that math. What we're showing is the dielectric properties here. So if I do this and then I do that, I'm going to flip one of the dielectric sheets. There should be a neutral voltage. However, because you have negative, positive, positive, negative, you'd think they'd neutralize. So let's try this. So here's what we're going to do. This is dead. It's actually shocking. Ow. I, gotta, I should probably ground myself. That one was kind of staticky. Okay, so we're going to take this other sheet. We're going to put them both on here. I think it's staticky because I got a lot of dust on here, which I didn't have last time. 
Okay, so we're going to charge this up. We're going to make sure we have a charge. We do. I'm actually going to charge it up again because that thing discharges it. We're going to take this off. Did you see how, did you see how actually it's sticky it was? See that? Now we're going to take one sheet off and we're just going to flip it over. Now I should actually flip this over. Um, I'm going to flip it from corner to corner. No, I can't do that. So that's okay. The reason I was going to do it that way is because uh, technically the edge hanging over isn't that part of the dielectrics not holding any charge. So now I have to neutralize a little bit of it. So I'm going to I'm going to neutralize that edge that's on there. It'll have a little spark. Tiny little spark. So now I can touch it. Okay, I got my hands on both of these plates right here. So we can check it with the voltmeter. We really shouldn't have anything here. We do not. So, um, okay. What does this mean? Well, now oh, chuck me a little bit there because I'm <laughs> I'm not grounded. Now we're going to flip this back over, put it back on, see all the ash falling? Bad fires here. I'm a little far away but still not fun. Okay now watch this, it's at about 8 kilovolt and we will discharge, here we go. So, absolutely 100% the charge is stored in the dielectric, no doubt about it. This proves that, okay? Now, you would think, right, because when you look at this, you would think that you'd have, well, here you'd have uh, negative, positive, negative, positive. It'd probably be reversed, actually, but we're going to look at it this way for now. So, therefore, when you flip one of these, you actually have positive negative negative positive so you have your two neutral zones and your two positive so you would think that when I shorted that out that everything would be neutralized okay so here's another question for you since we know that it wasn't neutralized in that manner this I'm not going to show you this this is a question what happens when you add well actually this is not a dielectric when you add another plate, okay, you don't have to put it to ground, but what happens when you add another plate in there, right? What I'm suggesting is, if you have a plate here and a plate in the middle and the plate on the end, right, when you put it here, it doesn't do anything different. It's still going to charge up the same you would, would expect, but here when you flip it, right, what I'm trying to, what, what I'm trying to tell you is, is, uh, and this ash falling, it's not good these fires. What I'm trying to tell you is, is in between these two other sheets, if you had a plate, does it act differently? Because if it acts, di if it, you know, if you need a plate to, to have the charge come off or get on, as I showed you, you know, I can, let's do one, let's do one, right? So I'm going to take one of these. I'm actually going to set the other one over here, get all the dust. I'm getting all over it. So if I charge this up, okay. Now, if I touch this, I'm going to get shocked, right? Watch. So, we'll charge it up again. Now, we're going to take this plate off. Oh, we got to do that again because we just dis discharged it on accident.
Hold on, let me have my wife turn off the drive. Okay, sorry. Let's make sure it's charged again. Okay, it's charged. So we're gonna take it off. Right. We're gonna take this off. Now technically, right? And it's a bit staticky, but technically if I put my hands like this, I should become the plates. But I'm not getting shocked. Right? So when I put this sheet back on, you need the metal plate. Or conductive plate like this. Now technically I'm conductive and this is high voltage, so you know, we should be discharging it. But watch. Okay. So this is just a really good demonstration to ask yourself where is the charge stored I don't like those words but where is the charge stored in a capacitor because you gotta ask yourself if it's in the dielectric then what happens when you have an air capacitor when you have an air capacitor right you can remove that air you can blow the air out of the way. Yeah? So you blow the air out of the way. Where does the charge go? You can still, right, have charge on those when you measure it. So um, these are some of the basic, you know, super simple demonstrations that you can do to question yourself. Where, where is that really charged at? Now for fun, let's charge this up. Oh yeah, that was a good spark. So we're going to charge this up. <clears throat> we're going to take this plate off. Okay, I'm going to actually set the plate over here. I'm going to take this sheet, place it here. I'm going to take this one. I don't know, we could roll it up. Whatever. Okay, then I'm going to take this plate and I'm going to put it back on here. Now I have the charged one here. Let's just set it here so it doesn't unroll. Now there may be a tiny little charge here, but it's not going to be your full voltage. Let's just take a voltage reading first. Yeah, there's nothing there. Okay, so it's dead. So the charge is there right doesn't have some funky thing going on here so if we put it back I don't know which way it was oh there's ash falling from the sky right now there are a bunch of really really bad fires going on I think it was this way might be in, in reverse there Ready? So, <clears throat> this brings up a really, really interesting point, which is if you had a really, really large coil and it had a lot, I mean a lot of capacitance, a lot, then technically you could charge an inductor just like a capacitor because the voltage would be stagnant between the windings right that's that parasitic capacitance I was trying to describe in my last video if you missed my last video because you think it wasn't important you should go watch it to make sure you're very clear on what I'm trying to present here <clears throat> but anyway um, like I said this was not my original demonstration I'll find the video someone else sent me and I realized oh yeah it's a great demonstration so I will I will find a way to do it and I happen to have all the right materials to do pretty well the exact same thing. Now I have actually charged up this mylar and I've let it sit for days and days, rolled up in the corner, put it back on this thing, bang. Okay. So I'm going to do one last experiment. I only have 10,000 volts. So 
if I only have 10,000 volts, is there a way to get more voltage from this setup right here? Can I get twice as much voltage from this? Here's how we can do it. This mylar, I'm going to charge up with 10,000 volts, okay? 10 kilovolts. I'm going to take this sheet and I'm going to put it up here. Then I'm going to put a new sheet in there and I'm going to charge it up to 10,000 volts. Now I have two sheets charged to 10,000 volts. The question is, do I get 20,000 volts when I put both sheets in here? Let's find out. So right now, we've got nothing. Charge it up. No, oh, popped. Why did it pop? Okay. Now we're going to carefully take this off. Uh, actually, let's meter it just to prove there's voltage on there. Not quite 10,000 volts, but yes, there's voltage on there. Now we're going to put a second sheet on there. Man, there is ash everywhere falling from the sky. Now I need to make sure I realize which direction I have these. So, uh, it looks like that. Make sure there's nothing on there. Nothing. Charge it up. There we go. Now, let's measure it. Measure it. 8 kilovolt. So we got 8 kilovolt and 8 kilovolt. We, we should have something in the order of 15 kilovolt, 16 kilovolt. Right? Kind of shocked me there a little bit. Right, same direction. Now I gotta be careful. More careful. What does that tell you? That tells you the voltage was higher because it jumped this one inch gap. We're gonna have to do it again. Because it, it actually jumped the gap. So, no problem, we'll do it again. We're gonna charge this one up. There's probably a little bit charge left on it. Oh yeah, we burned a hole maybe. I think I burned a hole in there, so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to offset everything. Cause I wanna measure. got a hole in these plates which makes this demonstration really difficult so this was uh, this way I did I burned a hole in this guy all right so this one is this way Okay. Statics getting me. My jet, my shirt's real staticky. Um. So I'm gonna actually offset everything a little even more so it doesn't do that again. That hole was in there. A little, little sketchy here with that broken handle, but so now listen. Okay, now let's see if we have more than 10,000 volts. Yes, we do. We had about 11 on there. Here we go. So, I'm going to do that one more time so you can hear these crazy noises. 
because they are hard to hear. But you can hear when I get close with the meter, it starts screaming and stuff. It's pretty cool. Here we go. Okay, that one's charged up. I'm being shocked because I got a lot of static going on, I'm not grounded. It's just that high a voltage. It arcs past even the biggest sides. Alright, well, that's a long enough video for this one. The point of this video is where is the charge stored? The entire... Everything can hold the charge pretty well. Well, take that with a grain of salt. But uh, what I'm trying to show, what you know, I really want you to understand is that the dielectric is where things are actually at. If you understand 100% exactly why and where and how the charge is stored in the mylar, mylar, then give me that lengthy description down in the video comments. Because um, I can't say I fully understand that part, but we don't need to at this moment. We just need to understand where it's charged or you know where it's stored because that means if these two plates have no mylar between them right the, ca the capacity is going to go up really high when you put mylar in there but if I put these two plates right here okay with a thin insulator right I could still charge this up and discharge it so if I remove this blow all that air away where the charge is supposed to be stored at and put it back together does it still spark and uh, I know the answer to that but I'll leave that for your imagination okay well God bless you guys as always read the Bible and if you don't mind give a little prayer to the people that are local to me I think there's now three fires I'm so thankful that the wind stopped this morning but you can see the ash falling from these fires that are all the way across the valley and across the other ways and uh, so I really want to uh, give my uh, highest hopes to people lots of structures and houses and people lost their homes and it's bad so just uh, just be thankful for what you have because it can be gone like that and you have nothing so I'm a very humble, thankful person, and I think that anybody who has a conscience should understand the scale of being grateful for what they have, even if it's almost nothing. Matter of fact, the happiest people are in the world are people who have nothing, because they care about people, and friendships, and loving one another, taking care of one another. It's all about the who's in this world, and it's not about the things in this world. Even your accomplishments may not ever really matter. However, I absolutely think you should try to pursue whatever it is you're trying to do, which is what I'm doing right now with these videos. And I want you to take it to heart that I'm sharing this stuff to my best knowledge, whether there's a few pieces here that aren't 100% right and I'm sure there are many of those. The point is, is I'm trying to share this because I care about the who. So be open-minded about what I'm showing you. And uh, we will get to a point where I can share lots of more. But I am learning through some of these other things. And I don't want to say certain things that aren't right or that I can't show you. 
So I'm showing you in these demonstrations. Okay. So anyway, be humbled. Pray for some of these people out here and all over the world. Look at this ash falling down. And uh, I mean, it's, you can't even see it in the sky, but yesterday it was really bad. All right, God bless. Thanks for watching. Go watch last video if you missed it, because it's important. Peace out. Woohoo! Now I gotta clean this stuff up. I gotta get going. Bye bye.